Atrioventricular Nodal Reentrant Tachycardia. Introduction. Atrioventricular Nodal Reentrant Tachycardia, AVNRT, is a regular supraventricular tachycardia, SVT, that results from the formation of a reentry circuit confined to the AV node and paranodal atrial tissue. Because of its abrupt onset and termination, AVNRT is categorized as a paroxysmal supraventricular tachycardia, PSVT. As with the majority of supraventricular tachycardias, the QRS complex and AVNRT is usually narrow, less than or equal to 120 milliseconds, reflecting normal ventricular activation through the his perkinje system, although aberrant conduction underlying bundle branch block can result in a wide QRS complex. It's mainly caused by a dysfunctional AV node that contains two electrical pathways, which form a re-entry circuit. Here, the slower pathway is called alpha pathway, and faster pathway is called the beta pathway. And alpha pathway has shorter refractory period than the beta pathway. Mechanism. When action potential arrives at the superior portion of the AV node, the impulse splits and travels down the alpha and beta pathway. Because the beta pathway is faster, it reaches the terminal portion of the AV node quickly, and from there to bundle of his, and finally reaches the Purkinje fibers and ventricles. Contract at the same time, the impulses from the beta pathway also enters the alpha pathway and collides the actual impulses traveling down the alpha pathway and cancels each other. Now, both the pathways are under refractory period. Because the alpha pathway has a shorter refractory period, it's ready to take another impulse while the beta pathway is still refractory. Impulse travel down the alpha pathway and reaches the terminal portion of the AV node. By that time, the beta pathway is at a refractory period, so the impulse travel down the ventricles and ascends upwards towards the atria through the beta pathway, causing both atria and ventricles to contract at the same time. When the ascending impulses reaches a superior portion of the AV node, the alpha pathway is out of refractory, and the impulse travels down the slow pathway, creating the re-entrance circuit. Etiology AVNRT is the most frequently occurring form of regular tachycardia. More females than males have signs of AVNRT. The ratio is approximately 3 to 1. Clinical Manifestations Patients with AVNRT most commonly report palpitations, dizziness or lightheadedness, dyspnea, and chest pain. Because of the paroxysmal nature of the arrhythmia, the onset and termination of the symptoms are usually sudden. Because atrial activation occurs coincident with ventricular activation during typical AVNRT, atrial contraction occurs when the tricuspid valve is closed causing rhythmic abrupt rises in venous pressure and can result in a sensation of neck pounding. Neck vein palpitations can be prominent, and simultaneous contraction of both the atria and ventricles produces canon A waves, also known as frog sign. <laughs> Types of AV nodal reentrant tachycardia Two forms of AVNRT occur. Typical AVNRT an atypical AVNRT. Typical AVNRT, also described as common AVNRT or slow fast AVNRT. The impulse travels over the slow pathway towards the ventricles and returns via the fast pathway to the atria. The retrograde P wave or atrial echo shows up at the end of the QRS. 90% of all patients with AVNRT are diagnosed with typical AVNRT. Spontaneous termination of typical AVNRT often occurs in the fast pathway, terminates with a QRS on the ECG, induced termination with carotid sinus massage, or adenosine results in termination in the slow pathway, terminates with retrograde P on ECG. Atypical AVNRT also described as uncommon AVNRT or fast-slow AVNRT. The impulse travels via the fast pathway towards the ventricles and returns via the slow pathway to the atria. The retrograde P waves appear far behind the QRS. Only about 6% of all AVNRT patients are diagnosed with atypical AVNRT. 
The remaining cases of AVNRT patients are diagnosed with a form of AVNRT that is even more rare. This form of AVNRT is slow, slow AVNRT. The impulse follows a complex route through the AV node and the surrounding area. Only 4% of all patients diagnosed with AVNRT have slow, slow AVNRT. ECG Findings Ventricular Rate The ventricular rate is generally between 120 and 220 beats per minute. ECG typically shows narrow QRS complexes. A wide QRS complex may be seen if there is aberrant conduction. P-wave morphology. In typical AVNRT, the P-wave is usually buried within or fused with the QRS complex, resulting in a pseudo-R, a second R wave, in lead V1 and a pseudo-S wave in the inferior leads. In atypical AVNRT, the P wave occurs late after the QRS complex, often appearing shortly before the next QRS complex, resulting in a pattern that resembles atrial tachycardia. ST segment depression. Significant ST segment depression during tachycardia has been observed in 25 to 50% of patients with AVNRT. Although it's more commonly seen in those with an AV reentrant tachycardia associated with an accessory pathway. T-wave inversions following termination. After acute termination of AVNRT and other PSVT, T-wave inversions may be seen in the interior or inferior leads in approximately 40% of patients. Canon A waves. Canon A waves are intermittent and irregular jugular venous pulsations of greater amplitude than normal waves. They reflect simultaneous atrial and ventricular activation resulting in contraction of the right atrium against a closed tricuspid valve. Whenever right atrium contracts against closed tricuspid valve during right ventricle systole, it produces systolic cannon wave. Regular cannon waves. Junctional rhythm ventricular tachycardia with one-to-one -one retrograde conduction is a rhythmic atrial ventricular dissociation. Irregular cannon waves. Complete heart block Classic atrial ventricular dissociation, ventricular pacing, or ventricular ectopix. Termination is often possible with vagal maneuvers, carotid sinus massage, or medication, or electrocardioversion. Treatment of AVNRT. Acute management. If hemodynamically unstable, electrical cardioversion. If hemodynamically stable with narrow QRS complex, First step, vagal maneuvers. If supraventricular tachycardia persists in intravenous medical therapy with first line as adenosine, if no contraindications to adenosine present. The advantages of adenosine over other agents include rapid onset and a short half-life. Adenosine terminates AV nodal reentrant tachycardia in over 80% of cases. It is well tolerated in most patients, with the exception of those with severe bronchospastic asthma or severe coronary artery disease. If vagal maneuvers and adenosine have been ineffective or terminate the tachycardia, followed by an immediate recurrence, intravenous non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers or intravenous beta blockers can be used. Long-term management. Infrequent and mild episodes may be managed with self-guided vagal maneuvers, for patients with episodes of AVNRT that are either frequently occurring or poorly tolerated, e.g. associated with near syncope or syncope, angina, or severe dyspnea, guidelines recommend catheter ablation rather than chronic medical therapy as initial long-term management strategy. In such cases, the risk associated with recurrent arrhythmic events, e.g. syncope with associated trauma, outweigh the procedural risk. In addition, the potential for definitive therapy makes ablation preferable to medical therapy in this setting. For patients with poorly tolerated symptomatic episodes of AVNRT who are not candidates for or who have declined catheter ablation, chronic medical therapy using beta blockers, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers, or antiarrhythmic drugs can be initiated in an effort to suppress recurrent arrhythmias. We should always prefer beta blockers rather than calcium channel blockers or antiarrhythmic drugs as the initial option for chronic medical therapy.
Algorithm for the Acute Treatment of Atrial Ventricular Nodal Reentrant Tachycardia. Management of AV NRT in the hospital or emergency department setting. All patients should have intravenous access, 12 lead ECG, continuous ECG monitoring. We check if the patient is hemodynamically stable. If unstable, Electrical cardioversion with initial shock using 50 to 100 joules with a repeat of up to three shocks is carried out. If the arrhythmia persists and remains unstable, then it's refractory unstable tachycardia and treatment protocol proceeds with advanced cardiac life support. If sinus rhythm is restored after electrical cardioversion. If the AV NRT recurs within minutes or hours, treat with longer acting AV nodal blockers. Follow up once stable in sinus rhythm. Monitor ECG for one to two hours or until hemodynamically stable. Diagnostic evaluation to be carried out. Consider prevention therapy. If the patient is hemodynamically stable, attempt one or more vagal maneuvers, typically beginning with the Valsalva maneuver. If sinus rhythm is restored, we follow the same protocol as before. If arrhythmia persists or unable to perform vagal maneuvers, intravenous adenosine is to be administered. If sinus rhythm is restored, we follow the same protocol as before. If arrhythmias persist, administer second-line AV nodal blockers, such as intravenous beta blocker and intravenous non-dihydroperidine calcium channel blocker. If sinus rhythm is restored, we follow the same protocol as before. If arrhythmias persist, electrical cardioversion with initial shock using 50 to 100 joules and repeat up to three shocks. If sinus rhythm is restored, we follow the same protocol as before. If arrhythmias persist and remains unstable, then it's refractory unstable tachycardia and treatment protocol proceeds with advanced cardiac life support.